welcome. I am so glad that you are here and I am thrilled for you to meet my guest today. She is a dynamic woman and a lover of the breath I, and her immense love on the of the breath really really shines through as she teaches and shares and leads breath work experiences she's absolutely wonderful so let me just tell you all about my friend and the wonderful Kiera Longman Kiera trained and traveled with the founder of rebirthing breathwork Leonard Orr and also with Sandra Ray Kiera is a master breath worker and teaches rebirthing breath work along with Katia Bustani, master rebirther. Kiera has created several online trainings and seminars, and Kiera loves to travel. This yeah, absolutely. So welcome, Kiera. <laughs> Hi. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so honored that you are here with us because I know that you will impart to all of the viewers your vast wisdom of breath work and just how important breath work is. So mm -hmm. thank you for saying yes to being here. And, you know, one of the things that I've been doing, uh, Kira, I've, I've asked everyone this and I ask, what was the crisis that mm -hmm. brought you to do what you do? Or what was the crisis you saw others having that inspired you, motivated you to do what you do? Would you share? Yeah. So I, um, I was just existing. I felt like um, I was a robot. And, um, you know, life was not enjoyable. I was going to work every day and coming home at the weekend really tired and not enjoying life. And I'm like, I've got to do something about this. And um, went to a hypnotherapist and basically worked through a lot of um, all my unconscious programming from my childhood experiences. And I did have like a very difficult childhood. And I, you know, in my early 20s, I used to drink a lot, binge drink, to, to numb all the pain that was inside of me. And so I really um, found the benefit of hypnotherapy um, also breath work and flower essences really made amazing changes in my life. So yeah, I, um, I had a very difficult childhood and my father lived on the other side of the world to me. So I never knew what it was like to have uh, a good, strong, emotionally mature male in um, protecting me um, I, I had a lot of difficulties with um, my mother's boyfriend. And um, so all of this, I, I had locked inside of me and I couldn't talk about it. And so now I help people particularly connecting with their early exper experiences because when we're from zero to six years old, our brainwave is in theta state. And everything we take in remains in, in, in us, in our unconscious. And if, if we don't deal with it, it comes out in crazy ways, like my binge drinking, going out partying to forget about that emotional pain inside of me. So all of this work was fantastic. And I mean, I am literally a changed person because of all of this. So it lent me down very different paths. And I also love connecting with the earth. And I remember, so when I was 16, my father took custody of me and I went to live in Australia. 
And every day I'd walk out. He lived on a big property um, with a beautiful view. It was all nature and forests. And I'd sit on the earth and I'd look out and I felt Mother Earth taking away all my pain and, ta- and, and protecting me and loving me. And it was such a wonderful experience. So that led me to study environmental science because I love nature. And that's the work I had been doing for 20 years. And now I've moved into breath work. (laughs) May I ask, you know, and I I can just, as you say that you would go outside and sit in Australia, I could just see you sitting there and just being fed and uplifted, literally. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Mother Earth. Mm. Would you not to put words in your mouth, but from sitting with Mother Earth, then you Mm. say you did binge drinking. So the leap from sitting with Mother Earth, being relaxed, and I ask this because there's Mm. somewhere, someone out here who will benefit from Mm. the story, from the sitting on Mother Earth, then binge drinking, from the binge drinking, how do you move forward to the breath work, and I believe you do other modalities also. Yeah. yeah. So that was when I moved to the city and, you know, I was young, having fun, and um, I just took it to the extremes on party nights, you know. I. <laughs> um, but that made me realise that there were, what am I doing with myself? You know, my life is so boring. All I do is work party and then recover at the weekend and that's not living and that's where inside of me something said something's got to change and that's when I realized I I reached out to a hypnotherapist first of all and that was the beginning of my journey yeah it's you know it really is interesting people Mm. say some people say, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do, but that still quiet voice is yeah. always talking yeah. to us as it's shared with you. You know, what are you doing? So how do you or how would you to someone watching, mm. how do you reach out to that young man, that young woman who hears What's next? What else? How do you, how do you, how how would you inspire that individual to reach out as you did to a hypnotherapist or to, to a breath worker? How do you motivate that individual for them to know that it's okay to reach out? Yeah. Well, first of all, you've got to discern between the voices in your head. You've got the critical voice Mm -hmm. and then you've got the voice of the soul who is out for your best and highest good. So listening to how the voice speaks to you Mm -hmm. and, and knowing that you are being helped and you don't have to stay locked in the prison of your mind because, um, Listening to that critical voice that puts you down. If we, if only we could learn to let go of that. And when we're young, we don't realize it as much that everything that critical voice says isn't true. Yeah. 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 And actually there are people that can help you and people that will connect with you. And in these times right now, that connection is really lacking So we do need people to reach out. And, you know, sometimes when you reach out to a breath worker, you can negotiate it if you don't have enough money for their fees or then maybe they can recommend someone else to you. Mm -hmm. But your life is so important. You being here on earth is so important. And nobody wants you to to, to lose you. Yeah. That is so true. You matter. Yeah, everybody matters. You matter. Uh, And it's our pain that we need to be able to connect with people, understand it, work through it, 
and let it go because it does lift. Yeah. Night becomes day. Yeah, I can definitely testify to that. Yeah. When one reaches out and let's say reaches out to a breath worker mm-hmm. and they're able to find the support. First and foremost, well done you for reaching out and asking for what you yeah. want and need. And so this individual is able to ask for what they need. How oh. does the breath allow their unconscious because sometimes the critical voice mm. can be is is unconscious yeah. it's, it's habitual so yeah. how does the breath support you to take it fr- to allow your unconscious to be conscious and what does that so, mean your unconscious yeah 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 unconscious? so i mean this is in the early stage of having breathwork sessions resistance comes up and that can be physical resistance and it's mental as well and it's a bit like meditation you've just got to say to those thoughts uh, uh, not interested in hearing about you because the ego is so cunning it will do anything to stop you from going forward on your path it's like why is she telling me to breathe like that I don't get this no this is no good and you've got to tell those voices to shut up. Absolutely. And so what we go through this in, in the early stages of a breathwork session and it's just being able to learn to trust mm. that you have a greater power within you, greater than that little voice, and you can move through it. And so resistance is futile as the Borgs. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody does it yeah everybody yeah does it. and it is a lifelong mm. lifelong yeah it is issue so even as you know i find even as you begin your beginning breath yeah. work and there's resistance even people who have been breathing for years let me just tell the truth on myself yeah. um there's a little bit of resistance. And how does the breath worker support the individual to, again, move deeper yeah. past and through? So really it's about trust. Mm-hmm. And as a breath worker, I like to spend time with the person to get to know them so that we can form a trusting connection. Because if, if you don't trust me, you're not going to go deep into that stuff that you've been avoiding for a long time. But I can tell you, the moment that you finally allow yourself to feel whatever trapped emotions or or pain that you're having, and, and you actually feel it and allow it to be, it lifts. And the energy changes around you. Mm. What does and it's so mean? important because in the unconscious, what, what, so when we're breathing, our brain is going back into a theta state. So all these programs within us then become conscious. So our unconscious is going back into this state where we've got the critical mind out of the way. It's observing. But now we're delving into the unconscious in that lower brainwave state. And then we can can sit with whatever we need to come up and whatever we're ready for. And it can take time, you know. As you just said, you know, this isn't a quick fix. Nothing ever is a quick fix. You know, we have to be dedicated to continuing. And we encourage people to have 10 sessions but it is ongoing and it is good to, to have sessions with different people. And why is that? Because different people have different abilities and styles and they might trigger something in you. So what well, we do say you have sessions with a woman and a man because a woman will bring out your mother issues, a man will bring out your father issues um, but then there could have been, could be someone else and just the tone of their voice reminds you of that teacher at school that whacked you for doing something, you know. 
So yeah, having, having that variety is really important. And then you don't get stuck in with someone and feel like you're not progressing. Yeah. And, and one of the things I always like to share, if I may, mm-hmm. um, make sure you trust your breath. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's imperative. As you are doing mm-hmm. your work, make sure your breath mm-hmm. worker is doing his or her work. So yeah. I always say interview your breath worker because I sure as heck would not want to anyone to sit for me who isn't continuing working on themselves. And I think that's more important than their experience is, is this person taking responsibility for their stuff? Because we have a lot of stuff going on in us and it takes a long time to work on it. Mm-hmm. And people can get complacent when they've been doing this for a long time. Or even just jumping in because breath work is the new thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why is it important for each person to take time to connect with themselves every day? And would you please explain to our viewers what connect? with yourself means okay so to connect with yourself is to put yourself in a state of relaxation and calm and just notice what's going on instead of ignoring it because that's what we're used to doing we're used to go feeling a sensation in us rising up and it could be anxiety and 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 totally ignoring it And it's connecting with that and saying, what's going on? You know, why is this coming up? Taking some breaths and feeling into it. What's going on in my life at the moment that's causing this? Yeah. Are the things that I haven't said to someone Are there things that are, there's a bit of a strange um, vibe going on with someone, with a friend of mine, with my parents? Am I, am I really actually angry about something? You know, I have to share with you Mm. that just you sharing that, offering to all of us to Mm. be with, connect with, what is present, there is a peace Mm. that comes with that. There's a, okay, no matter what it is, okay, I I can connect with myself and not be afraid. Tell me something, is that Mm -hmm. um, connecting with, is that easier for women than it is for men? Some, some men can do it really easily, but it is a lot harder. And, and this is particularly because, you know, from such an early age, men are told to shut down their emotions. And it's the, it's the, they call it the boy code. And the only acceptable emotion is anger. And we want to change that because we, we can change the world by simply allowing men to, to feel what they need to feel because it is okay. Saying a man that to man up and, you know, you're a sissy if you cry has done dreadful things. And there's a really, really wonderful film called The Mask You Live In that's a documentary film that goes through all of this. And I urge everyone to watch it. I often sit with it with my male clients and they cry, mm. you know, they're, and, and they're angry at the fact of what has been done to them. Mm-hmm. And I do have a lot of male clients who uh, went to boarding school mm. And a lot of really horrendous things are done to boys. Yes. And 
I just love seeing the transformation yeah. Yeah. that comes from yeah working with them. Yeah, it, it it is wonderful that you are inviting men in, and that men now mm. are coming into yeah sitting and connecting with themselves, coming mm. into breath work, and to the men who are here, and mm-hmm. to the women who invite yeah. their male friends, counterparts, husbands to come in. Well mm-hmm. done. All of you, well done, yeah. all of you. Um, you know, I want it because uh, Kiera and I, we both at one point studied with uh, yeah. Leonard Orr, yeah. who passed, mm-hmm. uh, made his transition. And I would love, as we are here together, mm-hmm. if you would do just a minute mm-hmm. of a breath filled tribute to. Leonard Orr, the father of the rebirthing community. Yeah. So Leonard was an incredible person, um, both for, for what he brought to the world, but he really brought your stuff up. <laughs> and most people didn't get it. <laughs> And they would project everything onto him and they'd hate him. Absolutely. And he did. He did like to wind up people too. But the beauty of it was he would allow you to be in whatever mess or whatever anger you had. And that was what he wanted in his trainings for people to really go into this. He was a triple Scorpio. I mean, you know, if... If anyone can make you go into your stuff, it had to be Leonard. (laughs) And that's what I like to continue because we want to get rid of the lead, the dross of what's inside of us and turn it into the gold of Mm self-realisation. And it's so, and so anyway, Leonard for me was so inspiring. We travelled together. And I went to India with him. And one of his um, philosophies was embodying physical immortality. And, you know, hey, I'm a scientist. you got to prove things to me. You know, I don't, you know, everybody that listens to his lectures are like, yeah, right, physical immortality. <laughs> anyway, we went to this ashram in Rajasthan and Sariska National Park. And it's this great big national park with tigers. And in this national park was a, an ashram dedicated to Bhatraji. And Bhatraji is a 2000 year old immortal yogi and he can materialize and dematerialize at will. And so everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah really and so we went to the ashram and um we did arti which is chanting in the evening it's absolutely beautiful and you feel the vibrations of joy just from singing sanskrit i mean it is such a magical language that lifts you up and afterwards we we got into the jeep there were four of us and um, we got into the Jeep and I'm, I'm with Nicole and Russell and Leonard's sitting next to me looking one way and we're looking the other way. And there's this man by the side of the Jeep and he's got this like, you know, the, they wear the, the orange robes, the yogis. Well, it was like a fawn color, a really light. And I was like, that's a bit strange. And I looked into his eyes. One of the irises was brown And the other iris, iris was like a clear crystal. And I'm like, that is weird. And I was like transfixed looking at him going, wow. And like, you know, he was looking at me and you could feel like something was being transmitted to you. And so I don't know how long this went on for, but he was just standing there. And in my head, I'm going, is this Bartridge? Is this Bartridge? And I turned around to Nicole and Russell and said, is this Bartridge? And they said, yeah, 
turn back around and that was literally a second he'd gone and there was nowhere that he could have run to we would have heard him he disappeared in front of us and when you have an experience like that your logical mind shuts up and it's like wow these things can happen now he was a high he is sorry a highly evolved being and you know we might not achieve that in our lifetime but just knowing that what our logical mind tells us isn't always you know it, it's possible you know this is possible is such a life changing experience and you don't have to believe me if you don't want to but i urge you all through going inside you can change your perception on reality with the breath yeah with the breath with the breath and people have incredible experiences during the, the last phase of a breathwork session where when you've worked through the struggle and you've surrendered you get amazing guidance you might get visited by a master a being uh, and in bliss yeah. So in a session with Leonard once, I experienced everything in the universe and nothing at the very same time, which is like another head-wrecking, mind-wrecking experience. It's like everything and nothing. And it was like... Yeah. And it really makes you realise life is worth living. Mm. Say that again. Life really is worth living. Now, don't get me wrong. I still get myself in a tiz. I still have that mind chatter. I still go through my stuff because I'm a human being. So was Leonard. He was a human being, but he inspired us and he inspired us to live. Yeah. yeah. He really, um, he loved the breath. Yeah, and, totally. You know, witnessing him mm. lead a breathwork session with someone was a session for you too. Was a session yeah. for me also. Yeah. Not only the person who was lying there, mm. but me also. Such a, a, a master. Yeah, really, yeah. truly mm. a, a master. I I want to ask you. Mm. Can we just do a moment of breath work yeah. in memory of Leonard? Okay, so I'd like everyone now just to close your eyes, just to completely let go, taking a deep breath in through your nose, Activating your nadis as you take that breath in. So taking another deep breath in through your nose. Feeling prana, which is the life force in the air that we breathe. Feeling the prana go through every cell of your body. So taking another breath in. And just feel that prana going through your body, letting your mind relax and just enjoy being in relaxation, taking another breath in, letting your body fill up with prana. It's so wonderful. Letting go really is wonderful. It's enjoyable. It's pleasurable. Let yourself feel the pleasure. Take a deep breath in. And as you're breathing in and breathing out, connecting your breaths, allowing your in-breath merge into your out-breath and your out-breath merge into your in-breath. 
because it is wonderful just to let go. And as you're taking these breaths in, just notice how you're feeling. Notice what sensations are going on in your body. So remember to connect your breaths, breathing in and exhaling through your nose, breathing in through your nose, exhaling through your nose and notice these sensations in your body is anything uncomfortable do you feel tension anywhere taking another deep breath in allowing the prana to go throughout your body this is your time because you really are important Breathe in that. I am important. Allowing your body to feel soft, to feel peace. Allowing any sensations to come up. Perhaps you could receive a message from a loving and kind voice inside of you, a voice that's here to guide you for your best and highest good. So just keep connecting your breaths allowing the prana to flow through your body. And if you feel uncomfortable in any area of your body, just allow it. Don't push it down. Don't suppress it. Just allow it and feel it and see what's happening and just sit with it. Because that energy, and it simply is energy, needs to fulfill itself. It needs to just let you accept it and sit with it. And ever so gradually, it'll change. So take a deep breath in. Feeling that uncomfortableness and allowing it, going into it, not escaping from it, just being there with it. You are safe. You are safe to feel this. Taking a deep breath in and allow it to go to fruition. And you can feel it changing. Releasing. taking a deep breath in, letting it be, and then letting it go. Perhaps placing your hands on your heart and connecting with your heart. Feeling the breath as it comes in, going down into your heart and expanding. You are love and you are loved. And this is how we connect through our hearts. And with every breath you take, you feel your heart energy expanding. (sighs) 
And that heart energy moves throughout your body. And you are spreading love from your heart throughout your body. You are a wonderful, magnificent, loving person. So keep breathing that loving energy throughout you. Connecting with your heart. Because you are strong. And in a moment, we're going to come back to our bodies, coming back to January 2021, knowing that you are love. You will always be love, no matter what your mind says. And you can reach out to people. You can find someone that you trust and you can connect. So taking a deep breath in, an invigorating breath to bring you back into your body, right here, right now, and open your eyes. So delicious. Mm. Love, 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 love. And that's what we're missing at the moment. I mean, we're in perpetual lockdown in Europe mm. and people are isolated and they're taking out their frustrations on those that they're living with. And if they're not living with anyone, they're, they're depressed. My mum was really depressed. She rang me saying, I can't get out of bed. You know, she rang me because she needed to connect with someone. So everybody out there, you know, the times are difficult right now. And um, a couple of my, um, my breathworker friends who are in their 20s, Danny and Katie, are starting up some su support groups for 20-somethings mm -hmm. because, you know, we were out living, we were out doing things, but they're locked up. And so they're starting up this support group. So do contact me and I can put you in touch with people that can help you. And as you say, reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Yeah. This has been such an honor so delightful and delicious. Um, please share with the viewers how they can uh, reach out to you, connect with you. And also Kira has lovingly created a, a loving free gift. So please yeah. check the, her, the details and mm -hmm. download it for yourself. How, what, how can people get in touch with you? Okay. So my website is breathtalks.com. So my email is info at breathtalks.com and you can con contact me um, through that and that's the best way. And do you have any online courses? Or yeah, starting in, in January, Katia and I are giving online breathwork trainings. We've got a European time zone training starting in early January. Um, it is still possible to join us if you're in Europe. And then on the 23rd of January, we've got the US time zone. And we are so excited because we really want to help people. We want connection we want community and that's most important is that once you've done a training 
keeping in community is so important. So um, if you're in the US um, time zones, even Latin America, Canada, um, sign up to one of our trainings. You can find it on breathtalks.com and globalbreathingawareness.com is Katia's website. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I, I feel not only the energy of Leonard and Egbert. Yeah. Um, Egbert was also at. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, actually, I got a message through from Leonard recently and he doesn't want people to be sentimental about him. He wants his teachings to keep going. He wants them to be updated for the younger generation and to reach more people. Because one thing we didn't talk about before was actually connecting with the elements, which mm -hmm. is like vital during the trainings. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's Leonard's particular style. A lot of other breathwork trainings don't do this, but we need to connect with the elements because the elements change us. And they can become a daily practice, if not a weekly practice. But having a bath, fasting, walking, um, having fire, sitting with the fire, it burns up your dross and you feel so much better afterwards. And so when we're in our minds going through all this stuff, connect with fire. It's invigorating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just showed my candle. Yeah. It, it, it yes. fire is, is lovely. Let's do that part again, Vanessa. Let's do that part again, because I talked over what she was saying. So do connecting from connecting with the elements. Yeah. So it's really important to connect with the elements. We've got fire, earth, water, and air. Air is the breath. Water is bathing in warm water. Because, you know, when you soak in a bath, and you really love yourself when you and appreciate it when you're in that water, getting the right temperature, first of all, perhaps put, putting some oils, some fragrant oils in it. It's wonderful. And you can breathe when you're when you're in the bath, too. But just enjoy it. It takes away your emotions because water is the emotion element. And then we have earth where uh, we practice fasting, silence. And then walking and exercise and eating a wholesome, healthy diet, that, that's eating the earth. It's making sure that we are sustained. And fire is incredible. Fire burns away the dross. Just sitting, even with a candle um, or, or a tray of candles and feeling that taken away from us because you have to do it on your own because the fire opens opens us up and spurts out our stuff but then it can go into another person if they're nearby to you so it's really important to be doing it on your own and having this time to yourself it's very sacred i love candles and i just offer to everyone if yeah burn a candle, please burn it safely. Yeah. Put it in a uh, container with a little bit of water at the bottom. If you do a fire, please do it safely. Mm. It's contained in a fire pit even, please yeah. be safe. Oh, so yeah. I offer to everyone, please reach out to Kiara, um, my sister in breath. Yeah. Just an honor to sit at the table with you. And I would like you to have the last breath filled words for our viewers. What breath filled words would you like to leave our viewers with? Get out of your head and get into yourself because you are wanted here. And the help is there. And so it is. Thank you. Love you. Thank Love you. you. <laughs> Love you too.